Would it make sense for the Red Sox to sign this playoff stud? What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Red Sea Radio. My name is Corbin, and hey, there's a possibility that by the time you're watching this video, the Yankees have been not only swept in the World Series, but kicked off the MLB offseason. And today, we're talking about one guy that could help the Dodgers get there, and whether or not this is someone the Red Sox should take a look at. We're going to go over the pros, we're going to go over the cons, to ultimately decide if this is something we want the Red Sox to do. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. Okay, so the player we are talking about in today's video is the potential possible signing of the Walker Bueller. Now, normally we go over the pros, then the cons, then we try to come to some conclusion. But with Bueller, I think it's an interesting case where the pros and the cons are sort of intertwined here. So we're going to have to talk about them together. But there is one pro that stands out amongst them in terms of not really having any cons. And that is simply how good Walker Bueller is when the lights shine brightest in the postseason. Because this year he's had one rough start, but outside of that, he's been nailed in the playoffs throughout his career. He has been a part of five playoff runs with the Dodgers for a combined 307 ERA with a not much higher 325 FIP over 93 and two thirds innings. His strikeouts during the playoffs jumped to 29%. This is a dude who comes alive when the lights are the brightest. And I do think that's important for this Red Sox team. If they are genuinely trying to compete this season, they're going to need experience when it comes to playoff production. They don't have a ton of that right now, especially when it comes to their rotation. They have a couple of guys in there who experienced 2021 with the Red Sox, but that's kind of it, right? Even Lucas Giolito only has two starts in the postseason. To get someone in here who has a lengthy playoff history and a successful playoff history could be hugely important to the Red Sox if they were to make a run next season. If they are genuinely interested in competing, I think Walker Bueller is a really interesting name to be a part of that. But the problem here is that you actually have to get to the postseason, right? The regular season really matters. And when it comes to Walker Bueller during the regular season, he can be absolutely fantastic. In fact, he can be one of the best pitchers in Major League Baseball. When he's healthy, he is absolutely lights out. In three of his healthy seasons throughout Major League Baseball so far, he had a 262 ERA in 24 games and 23 starts in 2019, a 326 ERA with a 301 FIP in 30 starts in 2019, and in 2021, he had his best season ever with a 240 ERA, a 316 FIP, a little bit lucky on the mound, but really nothing crazy in 33 starts. That also led to a league leading 171 ERA plus, not just the NL, but all of Major League Baseball. His ceiling is a top of the rotation, Cy Young vote getting all-star starter, which is exactly what the Red Sox are looking for. If they can get a legitimate frontline guy, it entirely changes this Red Sox pitching staff. We've talked about it a hundred times already on this channel. We're probably going to talk about it a hundred more times, but getting that frontline starter not only makes your rotation one of the best rotations in Major League Baseball because of how criminally underrated it was this season, but it also pushes a guy like Crawford, Fitz, Priester into the Red Sox bullpen, strengthening one of their biggest weaknesses. So if you're taking a look at the pros with Walker Bueller, you're taking a look at a guy who's not only a potential all-star Cy Young vote-getting caliber pitcher at the top of the rotation, you're getting a guy who is been a absolute ace in the postseason as well. The problem is his cons are also really interwoven with these pros because you have to simply rely on him being healthy, which he hasn't really done a ton of throughout his career so far. And in fact, he had Tommy John recently that kept him off the mound for a very long time, including the entirety of the 2023 season and part of the 2024 season. And because of that, there's a lot of rust that's going to need to be shaken off when you get back onto the mounds. And that was clear as day with Walker Buehler's 2024 season statistics because in 16 games, he had just a 538 ERA with an even higher 554 FIP. So he wasn't really getting unlucky on the mound. He was actually getting a bit lucky on the mound with that super high ERA. Don't entirely love that. He was giving up more hits, more home runs, more walks, and getting less strikeouts than he did over his past five seasons. He simply did not look like the same pitcher he has this season. And I think that's the big question here. Is he simply just shaking off rust or is 
is this who he is now? Can he just simply not get back to the pitcher he once was? Now, his postseason accolades and the fact that after one rough start in the postseason, he really settled down and got back to the pitcher he has been could lend a hand in pointing in the direction of, hey, look, this is just a dude who hasn't been on the mound in two years. This is a guy who's still trying to figure himself out, and this is a sign that he can get back to who he was. But at the same time, too, is that what's going on, or is it just simply the big lights are pumping a ton of adrenaline in there, and when those lights die down, he's going to go back to what he was in 2024. That's the question the Red Sox have to answer. Are they, one, going to be able to keep him healthy enough to stay on the field with this Red Sox team? And two, if he is going to be healthy, can they get his production close to a level for what he was doing back in 2018 through 2021? Because if they can, again, you're talking about an incredibly talented pitcher, but if they can, you're talking about an another wasted contract on a starting pitcher, which I don't think anyone wants to see. But at the same time, too, if they can get him back to what he was, his breaking stuff with Andrew Bailey's strategy coming into 2025 could be a whole lot of fun to watch. But the bigger question here, outside of just simply statistics, is what is it going to cost to get Bueller on this team? And is how is that going to affect the Red Sox chances of getting him? Because the pros with Walker are so closely linked to the cons with Walker, his offseason market is going to be absolutely fascinating. Now, we're, when we're coming to projected deals and whatnot, Spotrack.com has him currently with a value of around two years, $3.9 million a season, or just under $8, $8 million total. Now, I think they are dead right when it comes to the years. I would be shocked if a team gave Walker Bueller a long-term deal. There's just simply too much risk involved with his previous injury history to give him anything more I would say than probably three years maybe some team goes crazy and gives him four but that's a lot a lot of years to give to someone who really hasn't pitched a full season since 2021 so I think they kind of hit the nail on the head with the years here and I think that does end up actually being a bit of a pro for the Boston Red Sox because as we know over the last couple of seasons the Red Sox have been pretty gun shy when it comes to long-term pitching deals right even when they really like a starting pitcher. It feels as though they aren't really willing to go over three or four years to get that deal done. Bueller isn't probably going to take that to get him on this Red Sox team. So I actually think that ends up being a pro in the Red Sox favor. Now, when we're talking about the actual money attached, I think it might end up being a little bit more for Waka Bueller. Now, statistically, if we're taking a look at other players who've come off of seasons like this on the market, sure, right? That $3.9 million a year feels like exactly what it's probably going to end up being. But the problem is they didn't really take into consideration what Walker Bueller's ceiling could possibly look like. And I think a lot of teams are. I think there's going to be a bit of a bidding war, especially if it ends up starting out at like, hey, look, I'm just looking to get on a team. I don't really mind playing for a prove it deal type thing. I could see it getting close to or surpassing $10 million a year. Because again, if you get that ceiling of that number one guy that, hey, we're going to finish close to top five and Cy Young type player, $10 million is obviously more than worth it. And I think that's something the Red Sox are going to have to take into consideration here. They were all perfectly okay with giving a pretty decent amount of money to Lucas Giolito coming off of a bit of a down season. Is that something they're willing to do with Walker Bueller as well in hopes that he continues to stay healthy? That's sort of, again, you go back to that big question with this conversation, is the risk worth the reward? Now, if his number does stay right around that $10 million, which again, I think the possibility of him getting up to 15 15, 16 million a year is absolutely on the table. I even think it could go a bit higher than that, depending on how desperate a team is for his services. The conversation changes just a little bit, right? It goes from, okay, if he's worth, I don't know, seven, eight million a year, or even that 3.9 million a year, well, hey, that's basically no risk, high reward, right? If that contract doesn't work out, you're paying him really not a ton of money in the grand scheme of a baseball team. It doesn't really matter all that much. If you do end up paying him that, let's say 17, 18, million for two years just to come here and pitch for the Boston Red Sox, then it does become a high risk, high reward situation. And again, is that something the Red Sox are going to be willing to do? Or is that something the Red Sox are going to shy away from? In my opinion, the Red Sox are going to have to get risky this offseason. Every starting pitcher on the open market, most of the starting pitchers that are going to be available via the trade market are going to have a history of injury. It's just simply how the game is played at this point in its existence. And so yes, there are going to be injury concerns 
problems with just about everybody on this open market. The Red Sox are going to have a bit of a muddy time trying to figure out which ones are at high risk to repeat that and which ones are at a little bit of a lower risk in terms of bouncing back. It's going to be, again, like I said, an absolutely fascinating offseason because of this. But if we're ultimately boiling down the question of whether or not this is someone I think the Red Sox should target this offseason. I actually absolutely love the idea of Walker Bueller, but under one specific condition. And that specific condition is that they go out and they get someone else. If the Red Sox are planning on adding just one singular starter this offseason, I don't think it should be Walker Bueller. I think it should be someone who has had a bit more consistency lately. Because again, if the Red Sox are going to compete coming into 2025 like they have been preaching they're going to before this offseason truly begins, consistency and availability are going to be two of the biggest factors in making that happen and Bueller just simply isn't historically super great at doing that however if the Red Sox are planning on adding two starters this offseason let's say they go out and they trade for a Garrett Crochet I'm just going to throw a name out there this isn't a rumor or anything don't get super excited but let's just say they trade for Garrett Crochet and then they sign Walker Bueller you that would make this Red Sox rotation absolutely fantastic imagine a one through five of Crochet Bueller Hauk, Giolito, and Bayo. That is a top five rotation in baseball, especially if they can remain healthy. So, yeah, the idea of Bueller is absolutely appealing, especially with his postseason numbers. I think that's going to be huge in terms of getting the Red Sox to that next step. Having someone who has that mentality, that understanding, that ability to share with others on what it takes to win and win in the postseason is going to be invaluable. But again, this only works if he's a complimentary piece. If he is the star of the show this offseason for the Red Sox, that's a huge risk the Red Sox are taking, right? They don't know if this is the pitcher that they are going to get for the rest of his contract, even if it is just a couple of years. They don't know if the playoffs that we are seeing right now is more of an indication that that's who Bueller's going to be over the next couple of years. It's just, to me, if it's just Bueller alone, it's too much of a risk. But if it's Bueller with someone else, Bueller with anyone else more consistent, right? I think this would be an absolutely fantastic signing. If we're putting him in terms of free agent targets, I think the Red Sox should look at. He's definitely under a few of the free agents for sure, but I don't think he's that far down the list, especially with the cost to reward potential that Bueller provides. But that's just my opinion. I laid out the pros. I laid out the cons. Let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think? Would you target Walker Bueller if you could, if you were the GM of the Red Sox? And what kind of deal would you give him to get him here? Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, if you made it to the end of this video, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're new here, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys have hit the like button on this video as well. It just simply helps out a ton, and it's the best way to let me know you're enjoying the content. Don't forget, if you want to listen instead of watch these episodes, all you got to do is head over to your favorite podcasting app and look up Red Sea Radio. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one, and I will see you in the Red Seats.